Good afternoon, viewers of Radio Daily Solidarity. Uh, today, we are very blessed to have uh, one of the icons, the black icon of New Jersey for the Asian, Youth, for the Asian Women Contest 2016 of Radio Daily Solidarity. Her name is Yannick Pepe. A one of the mothers of black women we have uh, in New Jersey. From New Jersey, good afternoon, uh, Mrs. Janik. Hi, how are you? How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about you? Uh, well, I am 24 years old. I currently live in New Jersey. I work as a teacher at an Orange Middle School and I teach students with special needs and I love every minute of my job. I currently um, attend church at Our Lady of Perpetual Health in Galloway, New Jersey and I work with the youth group um, over at the church. That's about, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> what really motivates you to be a teacher? Well, my parents, my whole family has always been strong um, about education. My um, my mother uh, and my father never graduated from high school, so when we came to the United States, it was um, always a big push. It was always a big deal for us to go to school and to have an education. And so when they were pushing us, it was almost as if they were forging our um, career path because I became a teacher. My younger brother is currently studying to be a teacher and my older sister is a professor at a college and she teaches math. So education kind of runs in the family. Uh, what are the challenges and the problems of the black teachers in New Jersey? Um, the challenges I've seen so far are not um, I wouldn't say they're unique to black teachers in um, New Jersey. I think it's a problem that all teachers um, in New Jersey face. Um, it's a lack of support from parents at home, and especially in the community where I teach, it's very hard to sometimes get parents to be involved in their children's education because you know it's a two-way. It's not a one-person job. Education starts at home and it is fortified in the school system and when the kids go out into the real world it's proved to be fruitful or not and so we need the support of, of not only our administrators in the building but also the parents at home and any family members who are taking care of our students we need them to help us and so the lack of involvement from parents seems to be a big issue that we're facing uh, can you share with us some uh, some uh, some of your dream for the future? Well, in the future, God willing, I would love to work for the Department of um, Immigration. I would like to be an immigration officer and approve visas and I don't know. That's, that's exactly what I want, actually. I do know. I want to become an like, immigration officer. Uh, what can you tell us about your parish? or your committee, your committee of faith? My, um, well, we were formerly um, in Atlantic City, New Jersey, and St. Monica's, but St. Monica's was then closed and we moved over to Our Lady of Perpetual Help in Galloway, New Jersey. Um, St. Monica was a very diverse community, and we had um, worshipers from, I, I want to say all over the world, we had um, a Hispanic service, uh, Creole service, um, and of course we have the English Mass, but um, since we've moved to Our Lady of Perpetual Help, it's um, a little different. Uh, we, I only know that of their morning English Masses, and now that we've joined the community, they have the Haitian Creole Masses at 12.45 in the afternoon, and the parish is very big and um, everyone seems very communal. When we um, joined the parish, 
everyone was very welcoming and very supportive and we appreciated every single one of them especially father nick who has been nothing but a great support to the haitian community hey, do you have some advice some advice for the youth who are in bad direction the only direct, um, advice I can give them is the same one that my mother gave me. Um, when things get hard and you feel like you have no one to turn to, just know that God is there. Because a lot of times we want, feel like we can't trust other people. We feel like our, um, our friends are not really our friends or our parents don't understand or our friends don't understand. But God, He always understands. No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, he all, he's always there. He's on the lookout for you. So just when you feel like you have no one else to turn to, remember him. Please tell us a little bit about your spirituality. My spirituality is deeply rooted in the Catholic um, community. Uh, from Haiti, I had my first communion. I was, of course, baptized. And I, when I came to the United States, I had my confirmation. And I've just always been so involved in the church and because of my involvement in the church it strengthened my faith in God and it strengthened the way that I worship and the people I encounter um, even when I was living in Miami attending um, Notre Dame de Haiti Catholic Church I was surrounded by people who are just absolutely amazing and because of the way I was involved in the church, being a part of the choir, being a part of um, the youth ministry, just being involved in this church has made me, has brought me so much closer to God, and so it's strengthened my spirituality in the sense that it's given me another perspective on how to look at things, because I see how other people worship, and I see the um, trials and tribulations that they're going through, and they keep holding on, and they keep trusting God, and so my spirituality is strengthened through um, others, really, and their, the way they worship. What does mean poverty for you? What the, um, pardon me? What does mean poverty for you? Poverty? Yes. There is a lot of ways to um, describe poverty. Uh, there is, of course, the financial aspect of it when someone is absolutely in no way, shape, or form able to help themselves in the sense that they are unable to provide shelter for themselves, they are unable to provide food for themselves, they are unable to um, care for themselves because of the lack of financial means. But there's an also another aspect to poverty. Being in education, I see it. Although the person may be able to afford a pair of sneakers, they may be able to afford the latest trend, there is that sense that they are poor in spirit and they are poor in the fact that they lack an education. Because there are some things that you may have, um, you may have an abundance of. You may have an abundance of money, um, of wealth, but you're lacking in something else, and so you may be experiencing poverty through that. But in the sense I think you're asking me is a sense of um, financial means. And so poverty for me is just not being able to take care of yourself and not being able to provide shelter and food for yourself and your family. Uh, now you are going to speak a little Creole. How is your Creole? My Creole is very good. It's really good. <laughs> Is good. How many languages uh, do you speak? Well, I don't know if you can count them as languages that I speak. I fluently speak Creole um, and English, but I understand a lot of Spanish, and of course, I speak a little and understand a lot more French. And I am studying, well, I have been studying how to speak Korean. Korean. <laughs> yes, uh -huh. I, so if, if I understand you, you have uh, some friend from uh, from Korea. I have, yeah, I have pen pals from Korea. Um, one of my students actually this year, she's um, learning how to speak Korean too, so she's been helping me. Um, my sisters and I, we watch Korean shows all the time, so we're um, we're learning through the shows, um, but mostly through my pen pal, the person with whom I write back and forth. Um, she, yeah, she's been really helping me. Ah, it's great, great, great. Maybe, maybe one day you are going to learn me Korean. Ah, uh, 
But uh, Sunday is Mother's Day. Uh, uh, Mother's Day. What can you tell me about your mom? <laughs> Oh, I know Sunday is Mother's Day, but at my house we celebrate Mother's Day on the last Sunday of May. Like we, uh, yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> so my mom, my mom is amazing. She she's fabulous. She gave birth to six children and still manages to push forward every day. <laughs> she's been taking care of my um, siblings and I and my dad for as long as I can remember. She's always been the one to push us to do things that we don't think we're strong enough to do. She's always the one who's pushing us towards church, who's pushing us towards service, and who's push, pushing us towards education. So she's just a force of nature that no one should be want to reckon with. Uh, do you have a woman, uh, 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 do you have a, a woman uh, who is a mother or is a model for you? Who is a mother or a model? A mo model, model. Uh, oh, my sister? My sister, my older sister, um, Noelda, she is amazing. My sister is fabulous. She, okay, my sister is working as a professor at a community college, but she also works as a student service specialist. And sometimes she works as a supervisor at a, um, an institution for the elderly with mental disabilities. So she is constantly on the go, and she's also taking classes at the same time. So if you can imagine, she has three jobs, she's taking classes, and she has time to be involved with the church and always make sure um, that when it's her time to do the um, commentary or when it's her turn to read in church, she is always prepared. So she and my mother, the two of them, are just amazing, and they've just been my role models since, for as long as I can remember. And yeah. do you have a message for the youth who are in bad direction? Well, you know, like I mentioned before, um, just turn to God no matter what you're doing because even when no one else is there to listen, He is there. And even when you feel like no one else understands, no one else gets it because only you could possibly be going through it, He understands. Thank you so much for agreeing to answer my, my question, Yannick. No problem. I really wish you good luck. Thank you and have a great day.